Hey everyone, Dan here, and uh, it's time for another review of The Mandalorian. That's right, chapter 12 dropped last night, or the fourth episode of season two, called The Siege. This one was directed by Grief Karga himself, Carl Weathers. Now, keep in mind, spoilers here, so if you haven't seen the episode, it's only 39 minutes long, go watch it, come back, I'll wait. Well, not really. You can just pause this and... Yeah, you get it. Anyway, so we're going to keep moving forward, and hopefully you'll come back. The episode picks up right after Chapter 11 with the Razor Crest limping through space, and there's obviously something wrong, and he's not going to be able to make it to uh, find Ahsoka, so they decide they're going to uh, try to fix the ship, and he puts Baby Yoda in a little crawl space and tries to get him to change some wires, but instead he shocks himself, and it doesn't work out too well. So over soup, they decide... Uh, they're going to go back to Navarro, see some friendly faces, and get the ship repaired. Now, while he's drinking, while he's having his soup, he's lifting his helmet up just a little and drinking and putting it back down. And Baby Yoda's kind of like, yeah, what do you look like? No, nope, not going to see. Though, they're hinting that maybe he's trying to drift away from the no helmet thing, or the helmet taking off thing. I think by the end of the season, we'll probably see Pedro Pascal again. But we'll see how that works out. Now... We then cut to Navarro, where we see the armorer's old location, where she used to be, except for it's abandoned, and now there's Qualish living there. The walrus men from uh, season or from uh, episode four, well, they've now taken over that as their base, and they're divvying up their rewards from, I guess, their robbing people, and the two marshal comes in and starts shooting up the place and taking them out, and the marshal happens to be... Cara Dune. Yep, Gina Carano's character is now the Marshal of Navarro, or at least the area they're in. And, and she shoots him up and saves a ferret who now seems to be best friends with her. Kind of interesting. But it was good to see her in action. She does... The fight scene is really well done, and I think that's where Carl excels as a director, because Carl Weathers... I've never seen him as a director before. I don't think I've ever seen any of his work as a director. But he does a really great job in this episode just directing the actions. A lot of action is fast-paced, and it's really good. So I expect we'll see more of him in future seasons. Now, we don't get Ahsoka Tano in this whole episode, and most people knew that we weren't because this wasn't, you know, they just teased her last, so they give us the time, and then... And the fact that next episode is uh, going to be directed by Dave Filoni, who created Ahsoka Tano, seemed kind of obvious that we wouldn't get her till episode five. So Mando shows up on Navarro. Grief greets him. Grief and Kara greet him. They uh, put his best men on to uh, fixing the ship, and one of them turns around, gives that side-eye look, and immediately we know he's going to be a saboteur. He's going to do something, probably putting a tracking beacon on the uh, Razor Crest. And then we move into the city. We see the city has changed greatly. It's not just this little ghost town uh, western thing anymore. It's starting to become a little city. There's markets and more color and people running about. And it's kind of becoming a little trade town. Um, and there's even a statue in the middle of town to IG-11 who helped save them. So that's kind of cool. And we go into what was the bar. And it's now a school with a uh, protocol droid teaching. And they put uh, Baby Yoda in there so that uh, they could go talk business. And we see him use his force power for uh, for the first time, I think, this season, where he uh, steals another kid's macaroons. Again, food-related. What is this little guy's problem? Everything seems to be gimme, 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 gimme. Anyway. So... They go off to talk, and we get to see another character from the first episode. Uh, the Mithril, uh, played by Horatio Sands, uh, has returned. And I don't know if we ever got his name. don't remember getting his name. Anyway, we probably did in the first episode, but they just released him as Mithril. And uh, he's now working for grief and working off his debt. And the f there it turns out there is a... Uh, supposed to be an abandoned uh, empire base that they need to clear out and get rid of all the weapons and stuff or destroy so that, you know, it makes the whole planet Navarro safe. So 
they say, you know, hey, we'll repair your ship if you'll come help us do this. We need your help. And, of course, Mando's a big-hearted guy, and he uh, goes with them, and they take a speeder out there, and they, you know, they're trying to get in, and Mando flies up and knocks a stormtrooper off and falls to the ground, and then they go up in the elevator, and there's a whole scene where they're basically infiltrating this base, thinking it's an empty base, and they're going to go in and set the reactor off to explode it. Well, the problem is it's not an abandoned base. It's actually a cloning facility. And we learn that uh, by them finding a video, a bunch of uh, clones that look a little like Snoke, but obviously he's using um, blood transfusions uh, with, for, with blood with a high M class, which uh, of course is probably midichlorian. And it looks like that's what they're using the baby for. And Dr. Pershing hologram pops up and starts giving information like he's giving a report to Moff Gideon. And, and Mando's like, well, that's got to be an old message. Uh, Gideon's dead. And uh, the Mithril's like, uh, no, it's three days ago. So we learn that, uh, that uh, not only is Gideon still alive, but he still wants the baby because they're out of the blood that they got from him last time. So Mando freaks out and wants to fly back, and they fight their way out. And uh, uh, Grief and uh, Kara and the Mithril have to get out, and they can't get back down to their speeder. So they take an Imperial Troop transport and just fly it off a cliff. And then there's a chase through a canyon with speeder bikes and then TIE fighters, and it's a big fun, almost like a video game episode. Lots of action, and everybody's just having a good time. And then... Uh, the Razor Crest comes in and blows away the uh, ships and everybody saves the day. And it's a happy ending, except we know that, you know, Moff Gideon is now alive. Now, we knew it, but of course, Mando didn't. So he immediately takes off to find Ahsoka. And that's when we learn, we cut away, oh, that's when we uh, find out that um, the rebels have come, or the, uh, the, the Alliance are coming to... Uh, check out what's the disturbance, and they know that the Razor Crest was there, and Grief just pulls, pulls them, going, no, nope, don't know what you're talking about, and don't know why that place blew up. Must have been a reactor uh, incident. You know, and then uh, the uh, rebel is uh, Captain Carson Tava again, which is Paul Sun Young Lee, who was we met in the Spider episode. And he's talking to Cara Dune and talking about Alderaan and how she used to be a great fighter and all this stuff. So he gets to come back, which is great because we know he's a big fan of the series. So it looks like his character is starting to grow and becoming more and more. And he says something about how he thinks that something's going on in the Outer Rim, but the rest of the core doesn't believe it. So it's like he's tuned in, so maybe, maybe they'll have a friend as part of the uh, the group. So that's going to be big. Then we cut away to uh, an uh, Imperial starship. Not quite a Star Destroyer, but a big ship. And I know it's one, I don't know the name of it, but it was introduced in the animated series. So I'm sure that's going to pop, other people will pop up with that. You can put it in the comments below if you know what it is. Uh, and we first see uh, um, a comms officer, and it's played by Katie O'Brien. Now, Katie is interesting because she's been on Black Lightning, and she was on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And, of course, we, were, we seem to be pulling all the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. people. So here's another Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, actor ref, uh, appearance. Anyway, and she uh, find, we get a hologram appearance from the guy that prepared the Razor Crest saying, yes, we put the tracking beacon and he's got the child. So she goes and reports to Moff Gideon and we see Moff Gideon has these rows of, and it's hard to tell exactly what they are. They might be like battle droids. They could be clone troopers that they're just wanting to inject with uh, midichlorian blood. It's hard to tell what they are, but it doesn't look like a good thing. It looks like he's building an army. So we get to see Moff Gideon. We, you know, Giancarlo Esposito comes back. Uh, so it, it's kind of an interesting episode where it looks like it's just going to be a filler in the beginning. It definitely shifts and becomes an important episode because Mando finds out Karga's alive, or um, that uh, 
Gideon's alive. We find out that he still wants... Sorry about that weird cut, but having a lot of issues with this uh, particular recording. I actually recorded it twice, and both times the ending got cut off. And the sound wasn't mixing up. That's why you see uh, images through all this and not myself. But just to wrap this up, real good episode. Really curious where this is going to go. It looks like there's a bigger thing going on here. We uh, really get a chance to see um, what Gideon's plan is starting to be. He's building an army. So I think it's... Uh, this is just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and more important. It looks like it's starting to tie into the uh, sequel trilogy, the Abrams trilogy. So it, it's going to be really interesting to see how this works out. Now, uh, one thing that came up while I was recording it is I guess there was an error. And uh, there's actually a scene that has one of the uh, crew members in the background. I'm putting the picture up right now. And you can see a guy in like jeans and a t-shirt standing in the back there. I'm sure that's going to be the coffee cup moment from Game of Thrones for this series. But let me just go ahead and wrap this up here. I hope you all enjoyed this me uh, review. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons, uh, especially if you uh, want to see what I do next week. The uh, subscribe button will let you know when the new one comes up. Thanksgiving this week. I hope everybody has a good holiday if you are in the U.S. Uh, in Canada, you've already had Thanksgiving. But everyone, please be safe. Take care of yourselves. Take care of those you love. And I'll talk to you soon. Have a good one.